In this episode, I will show you how to flash the Coral development board with the Mendel Linux operating system. Now let's start using your shiny new development board. And all the steps that I execute here are visible in the Coral development board getting started guide. And the links to that are down below in the description. Let's go. So the first thing we need to do is to have our board ready to go on the table. And then on your host computer, browse to the Coral main website. The URL is coral.ai. And here on the Coral website, we can click on products, scroll down a little bit and find our development board, click that, and then click on the getting started guide link. Let's scroll down a little bit and see the requirements. In order to set up the board, you need to have a couple of things. You need to have a host computer, which is either Linux or Mac, and you need to have a micro USB cable, which will connect to your computer and provide a serial connection to the board. We will use this serial connection for the initial boot to flash the operating system image on the board. Then we need to have a USB-C cable, which is a data cable. Then you need to provide power to the board, which is provided by USB-C with at least two amps of current. Moving on. On your host computer, you need to have an application that can support serial terminal connections. So let me check on my Mac first that I have screen installed. Yep, we do. So we are good to go there. And next we need to have something called fast boot. When we first boot up the board to flash the operating system image, the board uses fast boot to basically say that I'm here, can somebody give me an OS image? And on your host computer, you need to have this fast boot tool, and then it uses the USB-C data cable to upload the operating system image to the board. And if you don't have fast boot installed, you can click on this link here that says download the Android SDK platform tools. And on that download page, I will click on download these tools for Mac. I have of course read and I agree with the above terms and conditions. I click on download this package for Mac. And then on my computer, I've set the download directory to be my desktop. I will simply unzip this platform tools package, change to that directory. And then what I tend to do is to copy these third party executables to on my Mac USR local bin. So that depends on your environment, but you should probably copy the executable to a directory which is in your path. So then let's check that we can actually execute fast boot minus minus version. And now because I'm on macOS Catalina, we get some complaints here that no, this is an unknown developer executable. So what you need to do is to go to your security and privacy. And you may see here fast boot was blocked from use because it's not from an identified developer. Hmm. So let's fix that by allowing specifically that yes, we want to execute this. So I clicked on allow anyway. Now let's try to execute again. And yes, I'm sure we open that. So now, as you can see, we are able to execute fast boot. We go back to the getting started guide. The next thing we want to do is to install the Mendel development tool. The development board uses the Mendel Linux, which is a flavor of Debian. And to communicate with the board, there's a handy tool called MDT that uses the USB-C data cable and the local network within that, or any other local network connection like Wi-Fi to communicate with the board, SSH easily to the board, and transfer files between your computer and the board. We install that using pip3. Before we can do that, we have to make sure that we actually have Python 3. So let me check on my Mac. Yes, I have Python 3.7.6. And the reason I have Python 3 is that I use the homebrew package management system on my Mac and I have installed both Python 3 and the legacy Python 2 using brew. So since we have Python 3 ready to go, now we are then able to run this pip3 install Mendel development tool. And note that if you use the user flag here in the command, the MDT tool will be installed in your user's Python 3 environment. So then you can note here in the getting started guide that you need to have your usernames, Python 3, library, bin directory in the path. Anyway, let's execute that. And I have added this path 
to my terminal path in my path profile. So with that, we should be able to now execute the MDT tool. So now let's move on and actually flash the board. The first thing we need to do is that we need to check that our dip switches are set in the correct order. So if we look at this image here, we can see that the switch 1 should be on and switches 2, 3 and 4 should be off. So then there's a note here on initiating the fast boot mode. Depending on when your development board was manufactured, your board may or may not go into the fast boot mode automatically. So basically, if the manufacturing date of your board was before April 10th, 2019, then you need to initiate fast boot mode manually. In my case, this board is a pre-production prototype, so definitely it has been manufactured before that date. Now to proceed, we need to install a USB to serial virtual COM port driver. There's a download link here, I will click that. We scroll down and find the serial port driver for Macintosh. Here we go, I click on this download VCP link. It should give us a zip file on the desktop. We unzip it and inside the folder we have the SI Labs USB driver disk image. I double click on that. And let's install the driver on this Mac. Double click that. Yep, we want to open that. We click continue. Authenticate that you want to do this. Okay, our installation is completed. So next what we need to do is to connect to the serial console. The first thing we need to do is to connect the micro USB cable to the development board. Okay, now we have the serial cable connected. And then on the Mac, we want to use the screen command to actually connect to that serial console. Now we don't see anything here because the board doesn't have power, but once we power on the board, we should see the boot up messages here. The next thing we want to do is then to connect the power cable. And then when I connect the power cable, pay attention to the serial terminal, we should start seeing boot up messages. Okay, power is connected. And I had to be really quick in the serial terminal. I only had something like two seconds to stop the order boot. You need to stop the order boot so that you end up in this U boot boot menu. And here we will then tell the board to start the fast boot procedure to reflash the operating system image. Fast boot space zero. Okay, now the board is basically waiting for fast boot operating system images. Now on the second terminal then, what we want to do is connect the USB-C data cable. There we go. And using this data cable, we are now able to use fast boot to flash the operating system. Let's first execute the command on my Mac, fast boot devices. And we can see the development board. It's ready to go. So then download the latest version of the Mendel Linux operating system image. There we go, download it. Then we unzip it. We change to the Mendel OS directory and we execute a pass script flash.sh. And now you can see in the serial terminal that fast boot is communicating with the board. The board is resetting and going into operating system flashing mode. So it's good to have both the fast boot terminal window and the serial console both visible so you can see what's going on on low level and you can identify any potential problems. There we go. The fast boot operating system flashing was successfully completed and now the board is booting up for the first time. What I prefer to do personally is leave this serial cable connection, which is the top terminal here, on so that we can see what's going on. And when the board boots up for the first time to this new Mendel operating system image, it's actually executing some first boot activities. So the first boot takes a couple of minutes. Subsequent boots will be very, very fast then. So let's wait for these initial setups to happen first. There we go. Now the initial operating system setup is completed and we have a login prompt. So just as a reminder, this terminal window we are looking at is the serial connection to the board. The reason I'm doing this is that even though the getting started guide says 
Now you can disconnect the serial cable and use the USB-C data cable and the MDT tool. If you're on Mac OS X Catalina, there's a known problem at the moment that Catalina doesn't understand or doesn't allow LAN network connections through this USB-C cable connection. On earlier versions of Mac OS X it was possible, and hopefully it will be fixed or we have a good workaround with Catalina soon as well. But for the time being, the workaround you can do with the development board is to use your local Wi-Fi connection. So basically connect the development board to the same Wi-Fi network as your host computer. And then the MDT tool can use this Wi-Fi connection on the same network to communicate between your host computer and the development board. Let me show you that on macOS Catalina, the MDT devices command will not work because of the Catalina restriction at the moment. So what we need to do is to continue for a while using this serial terminal connection to the board. Let's log into the board using Mendel as the username and Mendel as the password. And then what you want to do is, let's check sudo ifconfig-a if we have any networks connected. We don't. So normally here, we have the USB-C data cable connected to our Mac host. You would see a local IP address, but we don't see that because of the OSX Catalina restriction. So as a workaround, let's now use the NMT UI tool. And we want to activate a Wi-Fi connection. What I will do is I will connect to my stateless local network here. Type in the password and select quit. And now if we sudo ifconfig minus a on the WLAN zero, so Wi-Fi adapter on the development board, we can see that we have a local address. And let's try pinging from my Mac this local address. Yes, it's successful because I'm on the same network here. Let's now go back to this getting started guide with this workaround or Wi-Fi network active. And in the getting started guide, our next step should be MDT shell. Now let's try to see if that works using the Wi-Fi network without any specific IP addressing. Now we have a small problem here. By default, the MDT tool tries to use the USB-C data cable to connect to the board for the first time, generate the key and push the SSA key to the board. Now, because we have to use Wi-Fi, we need to have another workaround. So let's do the following. On your host computer, let's execute SSH keygen and generate an SSH key pair manually. And I will call it mdt.key. And I will store it on the local current directory first. And we will make one with an empty passphrase. So now we have generated a key pair. There's a private key and a public key. We need to first copy the private key on your host machine to your .config slash mdt slash keys directory. So this is the directory where the mdt tool will find the keys to communicate with the boards. And then the public key has to be given to the development board. So using the serial cable, if you don't have an SSH subdirectory yet, let's create one with mkdir.ssh change to the SSH configuration directory. So now we should be under home mendel.ssh. And then we want to vi or edit an authorized keys file. And the contents of that file should be now our new public key that we just generated. So on your Mac, copy carefully the SSH RSA public key, copy that to the clipboard, press I for insert, and insert the public key here exit and save the editor and verify that you have an authorized keys file where the contents are the same as on your Mac in this case. So now we need to still restart the SSH key handling daemon on the development board. So you can execute sudo service mdt keymaster restart on the development board. The keymaster is now reloading any keys. In this case, it reloaded this authorized keys file. And now finally, on your Mac, using the Wi-Fi connection, we should be able to connect to the development board. So let's check again on the development board, what was the IP address. And now we try to connect MDT cell to that same IP address. And boom, we are done. So now then, with this workaround done, let's go back to the getting started guide. 
The next step is to connect to the internet, so basically provide a network connection to the board. Well, we have done that already. We have already executed NMT UI because of this Catalina workaround. Next, what we want to do is to update the Mendel operating system software. So we want to execute sudo apt-get update and then sudo apt-get dist upgrade. So basically upgrade all the packages to the latest versions. So let's do that next. Okay, the package update is done. And then we want to install the TensorFlow Lite Python runtime, definitely. We will be using TensorFlow Lite a lot on this board, that's the whole point. <laughs> so let's copy this. Make sure that you're on the home directory of the Mendel user. And then we want to pip3 install the package that we just downloaded. Copy, paste, execute. Okay, that's done. Now let's do the final check to make sure that our board really works and we are able to use the Google Coral HTPU Machine Learning Accelerator. So on the board, let's start the HTPU demo minus minus stream example application. It will start a local server on the board, listening on port 4664 on the web, and basically running through a locally stored video file and inferencing that video file in real time using either the HTPU or the board CPU. So let's connect to the port IP address, port 4664, and let's see what happens. So now we are connected, and we can see that, indeed, we are now able to inference these cars running through that video file. And currently we are using the HTPU, so if you see, the inference time is about 16-17 milliseconds. And on the demo app, you can press the N key and switch between, in this case, now the board CPU. So now you can see that running with the CPU, the inference time is about 365 milliseconds per frame. And if we switch back with the N key to the HTPU, we drop down about to about 16 milliseconds again. You can press Q, Control C, and exit the example app. Here we go. Now the initial setup is done. Okay, this is going well, almost done. Let me add the bye bye scene now to the end. Oh, ah, you know about the yeah. bye bye scene? Yeah. We have to record it again. Why? Because we forgot to press the button on the sound record. But that was like three weeks ago. My hair is so much longer now. It's okay, nobody will notice. <laughs> That's it. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, click the like button, click subscribe below, and see you next time. Bye bye.